everyone. Um, vlog recording. I just got back from seeing the Miku Expo concert for 2024 in Portland. Um, this is my first time going to a Miku Expo show. Um, I don't recall this is the only time, first time they've been in Portland. Let me double check. Uh, I think this is, um, yeah, so I believe this is the first time Miku Expo has been in Portland. So this is the, like, so the place sold out, not surprising me, uh, set the Keller Auditorium and this was a heck of a show. Um, broadly speaking, there were, so. First off, as I mentioned, I haven't been in the Keller Auditorium for a concert since I, or any event since I was in grade school um, for a theatrical, for a stage play adaptation of A Wrinkle in Time, which was well done, um, very minimalist, but that's not too surprising considering the technical levels of the time and also the subject matter. I think the minimalism worked very well back then for that. But anyway, However, this is where you're talking about Hitchini Miku and Miku Expo. So I will say, well, I should say first, uh, to describe Keller Auditorium. Um, there are two, like, if you're going to a big show in Portland, there are three venues that you're going to go to. You're going to go to either, um, like, for, for, for a concert or that sort of thing going to go to the Arlington Stitcher Concert Hall, you're going to go to the Keller Auditorium, or you're going to go to the Rose Quarter to either the Memorial Coliseum or the Moda Center. Like, before, this is for the really big shows. Maybe, maybe to um, University of Portland and their basketball stadium there, but probably it's going to be one of those sort of three centers. Memorial Coliseum and Moda Center are for the really big shows. AEW and like and NXT play like Memorial Coliseum and the Moda Center. Um WWE plays the Moda Center, big arena rock shows like when Electric Light Orchestra comes here, comes to Portland, when Iron Maiden come to came to Port is going to come to Portland are playing the Moda Center. And, and one of the two venues at the Rose Quarter. The Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall, that is where you go to see the orchestra, to see Portland Symphony. Um, if you're going to see, like, if you go, like, go there for, like, symphonic classical rock music or a, a symphonic, um, like, video game music shows, like video games live and, um, Final Fantasy concert and the Legend of Zelda concert, those played at such a concert hall. If you're going to see like, and the Keller Auditorium is for big stage plays, musicals, comedy, like the big stand up comics, because that's more seating. Um, it, it's also where Portland Opera is based out of. To put it another way, is you will hear Mozart at both the, the Aaron Lee Snitzer Concert Hall and the Keller Auditorium. Um, if you are hearing Magic Flute, in fact, you might even hear the Magic Flute at both locations. The difference being is at the Schnitz, it's going to be um, play, it'll be just the symphony playing music from the Magic Flute, maybe having a vocalist from Portland Opera come out to sing a uh, particular song or aria portion of the, the uh, of um, of say the magic flute if you are going to see if you're going to the keller auditorium you are going to see a staging of the magic flute and so for something like miku expo really the venues are probably that that work best for the setup are going to be either memorial coliseum moda center or keller auditorium and I am recording this the night of the concert, 
which is also puts us in the middle of women's final of uh, the women's NCAA basketball championships, which are currently being held at the Rose Quarter. So, yeah, Miku Expo ain't ain't getting in there. Uh, even if they book, even if like everything is just in the in the Moda Center and nobody's using the Memorial Coliseum, the tournament is using all the parking. So nobody has parking. So the Miku Expo concert doesn't have parking for the attendants attendees to go at Memorial Coliseum. So Keller Auditorium was always kind of the only option here. Uh, about the stage setup, I'm going to have a picture of the setup in the uh, over underneath the closing credits. But basically, the setup was we had so. If you've never seen a live Hatsune Miku Vocaloid concert, um, they are it is the Vocaloid vocal track playing with Vocaloid usually using some form of holography, not always, um, and with live instruments at with, with a live group of uh, musicians providing the musical accompaniment, which means like if you're doing something like say for example they didn't have senban zakura on the set list but say if you had senban zakura you need to have a particularly good keyboardist or guitarist to on your group um to handle the guitar track the guitar line for the song so you have some decent session musicians even if they're not necessarily in like a big name rock band at the time so you have them in the background um and then in front of them we have where the vocaloids are which has a big black reddit says it's a says it's actually a big led screen from some of the perspective from like elements that are put up for some of miku's um numbers i'm going to say not i am getting the, i got the impression it was more that a more a technical thing to help with the holography that the that with the setup as far as the venue they felt that the background setup was perhaps a little too confined to um that it might interfere with the actual projection and so decided to do the setup that way at least from where I was kind of sitting, or I, I, or I didn't quite get a sense of proper sense of depth of field. Probably if I had gotten a little slightly, either more centrally focused seats or uh, a little closer, I might have gotten a bit more of that. Um, that was fine. Throat's a little dry after yelling at a concert. Tends to happen. So that's kind of the setup. Each like there is like the, the artifice is clear for the, the, the presentation. Um Miku or all the other vocalists will load in and out basically at the beginning and end of each song. Um it's a nice neat visual effect when they do, but it, it is also clear that they have put that they put together the animation for each song. Uh, the choreography for the dance moves and that sort of thing. They are limited to a certain space on stage, but I suspect that's also the case with like the full hol um, holographed, like the Japanese shows in, lar in, in larger venues as well. So that's not surprising, or I didn't feel it was a particularly negative there. I, was, I expected that. I've seen Hatsune Miku live concert before. I watched them on Crunchyroll. I've watched them at like the, the live one they did for Anime Expo. Um, I've seen subtitled videos from live concerts on YouTube. I'm familiar with how they work. I have an idea of how Hatsune Miku, con how a Vocaloid uh, Miku Expo concert works. So I wasn't, I wasn't too upset with it seeming a little more restrained. As far as the actual performance itself, you know, the band is great. Um, I want to shout out to the members. Um, I pulled up the uh, Miku Expo tour information from uh, the Vocaloid Wiki. 
Um, particular shout out to uh, bassist Leanne Bowes, um, drummer Dylan Wood, and guitarist Vixen's Diary. I couldn't see the keyboards for uh, Tobias Witt very well. Um, like, looking at these people's like set list, not set list, but like they're like, um, uh, <coughs> like, like, um, instagram pages like i do definitely get a sense that like oh hey these guys are like fairly bit like like rockers like rockers and punk punk adjacent in a few cases um and like they're and like I, I got the sense from this that like, like they're, like they're definitely digging this. Uh, like, like I mean, like they're, this is a big sh like this is a like, like I appreciate the fact that while, again, I knew going in that the vocaloid performances themselves are pre prepared. They do not necessarily have the level of spontaneity that a lot that a, I'd get from a more standard live show uh from a rock act there that the backing band brought that sense of spontaneity and energy to help like the audience the, the crowd was amped from the from from the jump and i definitely got that sense that the backing artists were very much feeding off of that and um was really like and they were amping up the audience as well i got um they i i never had a sense uh oh they're just that they're here that they're, that they're just here they're uh, that i oh i i i, I kind of wondered a bit about that with some stuff like for, for something like miku expo um but i'm glad that was not the case i'm, I'm glad that they dug it that, that 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 there was that sense of energy with the backing up the band um I wasn't able to get merch, unfortunately, because the line for the concert to get in, as far as for like just general admissions, you bought your ticket because nobody's buying ticket stores was sold out. Um, ran f around two blocks, not was two blocks long, ran around Serpentine two blocks. So that was, like, that was one of the longer lines I've been in. This is also one of the biggest, con bigger concerts I've been to in quite some time. Um, next biggest concerts, probably the like physically biggest and also in terms of like how emotionally I'm, I'm hyped for this is, um, ELO's electric light orchestra's last concert, which will be, um, in the Portland area later this year. I, otherwise, um, talk about why I enjoy Matsuni Miku with Vocaloid and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm a fan of like prog rock and metal and also of course J-pop and that sort of thing as well. Um, and one of the things I appreciate about Vocaloid as a software, like one of the albums I love a lot is the first album from Boston. If you're familiar with the story of how Boston's first album was made, um, it was basically the guitarist of the band is well, actually doing all the instruments um, and producing it and everything else. Um, I mean, with Tom Schultz, he recorded all the all the instrument tracks he recorded the um the, all, all the instrument tracks and then hired us uh he'd written all the songs and he hired a session vocalist uh to do the vocal track but otherwise he'd done everything himself in his basement uh he'd like he'd get a master of mit he'd played multi-instrumentation stuff in the past he built a studio at his home in the Boston area. Uh, 
and he put together a six song demo tape and more or less like at a professional level, more or less. And shipped it off, got approval, uh, got, got signed and then recorded the full album again in his same studio, him doing all the backing tracks and with the same hired session musician, a session vocalist for the thing. And then like he had to hire session musicians for the actual tour when it came time to go touring, but otherwise like it's just Tom Stultz. And so I bring this up because when I listen to some like the really great like Vocaloid songs written for Vocaloid or performed by Vocaloid, like especially stuff from like Rio of Supercell or to Supercell in general, I think about Boston, that like that first album, their self the, the self titled debut album, because it has that level of quality and craft to all of the, to all of this work. Not not every Vocaloid song is is perfect but like this a lot of these songs particularly the ones that get picked up to be used in the tour the ones that are licensed to use in the video in the rhythm games and that sort of thing is like i have this similar vibe of like it's a group or even a solo individual who put these like well-crafted songs together and vocal and using vocaloid using Katsune Miku or Megarine Luca or Lennon Rin Kugumine or Mako or Kato, any of them is basically, I can't get a session vocalist. I don't know a session vocalist, but I have this song that I feel the need to create. So I'm going to make it and I'm using this software instead and learning the Vocaloid as an additional instrument. And so that is kind of awesome. And like, if you, if you view punk it, 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 as a maker thing, not necessarily in the sense of punk must be Three chord, two chords in the truth, six string guitar, cheap drum, six string guitar that you bought from a pawn shop, cheap drums, uh, etc. If your view of punk is no circuit bending can be punk, chip tunes can be punk, like chip, particularly chip tunes made with like an old with a Game Boy, can or I mean punk that that. Casio keyboard that you that you can get for 25, 30, 40 bucks from a goodwill that's cheaper by a that's a cheaper than that guitar from the pawn shop that costs you three hundred dollars. Um in that sense, Vocaloid is almost as punk as it gets. Um, yeah, like Miku Expo is a heavily produced multi-million dollar tour playing larger venues than smaller punk clubs, but the songs they're playing are songs that are made by people in their apartments, in their garage. Maybe they rent some studio space or practice space to do the backing tracks themselves, but they're do, but doing it like this very small operation and then just uploading it to Nico Nico or YouTube or whatever, and hoping that they catch on and, or SoundCloud and hoping it catches on. And sometimes it does. And that's, and in some cases for a lot of these, they catch on to such a degree that they get licensed to be used in an international tour or on an internationally distributed video game rhythm game where the focus is the song itself not just 
having it ambient in the background. And I dig that. And the audience of people who went to see this show, a sold out audience of people of all ethnic groups, um, straight people, trans people, gay people, um, of people who are like of all walks of life. I saw people with like heavy metal t-shirts coming like in line to see the show or like, people who clearly like, are the kind of people like I, I see them at a metal show. If I went, if I went to a metal show, if I went, damn it. The point is the, the all walks of life brought together by uh Vocaloid and Atsuni Miku. And I think that's awesome. If Miku Expo does come back to Portland and with this sold out show, I hope, certainly hope that'd be the case. Uh, I certainly would go again. And if you have the opportunity to go see uh, Tony Miku live in your town, I definitely recommend taking the opportunity. It is very much an extraordinary experience. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>